Hi, I'm Alex Howard. I'm here with Sam Anderson from our nutrition team at the clinic. And today we're going to be talking about leaky gut syndrome and its role in any chronic fatigue, fibromyalgia, Lyme disease, and really that, that group of illnesses. And I know that there's quite a lot of misunderstanding around this area. Um, and I know that for me on my journey, it was something that I kind of knew was going on because I had all these food intolerances and that kind of thing. Didn't really understand why, didn't really know what to do about it. Yeah. Um, so hopefully what we'll do today is just to kind of simplify some of this and to put it in, in terms that people can hopefully understand. Um, so Sam, maybe a good starting point is what leaky gut syndrome actually is. Okay. Well, if you think about your digestive tract, I sometimes just keep it very simple. You think it's this tube that goes from basically top to bottom. And um, your, most of your digestive tract is literally lined with this single layer of cells. And those cells are the ones through which you're absorbing your food that you've you know, eaten and digested throughout your digestive tract. Now, what happens in leaky gut is those, that single file of cells, if you can imagine, there's next to each other sitting very tightly together, and actually it's called tight junctions, the, the gaps or the lack of gaps between these, these cells. And what starts happening in leaky gut is those cells, cells are starting to come apart. And so what now can happen is that food particles, toxins and bacteria can get, can get further into, um, into the body through those gaps that are forming between the cells. So it's almost like undigested food particles get into the bloodstream and then I think often what then happens is the immune system starts to react to it because yeah. it sees it as kind of enemies, or want a better term, that are yeah. in the system. Absolutely. I mean, usually what comes before leaky gut is already some level of digestive disturbance, um, inability to break down and digest foods as completely as you should. And so that starts already wearing down that epithelial lining, those cells that are lining that, that tube that is your digestive tract. And you know, the poorer the condition of the cells, the easier it is for them to come apart. So then not only you've got the coming apart of the cells, but yeah, actually your food wasn't digested that well anyway at that point. So as you say, you get bigger particles. So your immune system is going, well, hang on a minute, you know, the food used to come in this sort of size and now they are you know, twice the size and I don't quite recognize that. So suddenly you can start getting immune reactions to foods and substances that you were absolutely fine with previously. And you mentioned about a certain amount of gut disturbance could be causing this. What would be some examples of some of the things then that would cause leaky gut in the first place? Well, you know, one big contributor to digestive uh, disturbances can be just long-term stress, first of all, because literally stress hormones, if you look at it more on the biochemical physiological side, stress hormones digest blood flow away from your digestive organs, so your digestion suffers. And once your digestion starts suffering, then you know, you're starting to enter this slight downward spiral with everything because obviously the bigger particles are now putting a strain on, the, on that cell lining, etc. Or it could be you know, repeated doses of antibiotics, which are going to start wiping out your beneficial bacterial flora, which again, you, you've got about, I think, up to one and a half kilos worth of beneficial bacteria in your gut, which is quite a lot. I mean, I don't know how much that is in... In pounds, that's probably ooh, a lot. A lot. <laughs> a lot. It's like technical, technical, <laughs> technical term. Technical term. I think it's about three pounds or something okay. like that. I think there's two pounds per kilo. Anyway, okay. um, so your diet, your beneficial bacterial flora suffers, and they also play a really important role in digestive function. So. If those are beaten down by the repeated doses of antibiotics, then again your digestion starts suffering, you might get some overgrowth of pathogenic bacterial flora. All of that is going to keep putting strain on that single very thin lining of cells that you've got there, protecting kind of almost the rest of your body from the outside world, if you like. And so that being some of the things that can cause it, what are some of the symptoms that, that people get? Okay, well. Symptoms can be really varied. I mean, as you were saying, one of the big things is if you start feeling, you, you're starting to literally get allergy-like like symptoms up to certain foods. I mean, you might even start getting sort of rashes or um, you know, more external manifestations of that. But often it's just digestive disturbances. So you feel bloated, you feel gurgly, you feel very uncomfortable, you, know, you eat something and your stomach really blows out your bowel movements become quite irregular. IBS is often you know, the kind of very handy term that you get given. 
which means all of those things, alternating constipation, diarrhea, um, wind, bloating, flatulence. All that really nice All that really stuff. nice stuff that you really want to talk about across the dinner table. But <laughs> or the breakfast bar. <laughs> <laughs> but it's really important yeah. because ultimately that's the way, how, you know, that's the only route for your body to get nutrients. Yeah. So that being some of the symptoms then, how do we know if someone's got that? I mean, I, my, understand, my understanding is it's often it's symptom based, but there are yeah. also tests that can be done around this as well. Yeah, I mean, there are tests that can be done around it. You can literally um, consume certain substances that we know how, how they absorb in the body, you know, whether, you know, how quickly they absorb, and then you literally collect a urine sample on a timed basis and count those challenge substances to see the level of, of leakiness. But often I find it's also very important to look at, you know, fine, you can prove that you have a leaky gut, but really you've got to look back again and say, well, how did you get there in the first mm. place? So as I said, if there has been repeated doses of antibiotics, we know that there's probably some further disturbance to the gut flora, so then actually something like a, you know, a full-blown gastric panel or, you know, a very detailed stool analysis, basically, is going to be the way forward because then you're starting to get to the underlying issues yeah. and then by building that up you know you will start basically calming down the situation in the gut anyway and allowing those cells to start healing and sticking together again. I, I was going to say I mean just briefly in the minute we've got left what do we actually then do about it yeah. um, so what are some of the options around that? Um, well at the very basic level I think you've got to look at what you're eating so initially just take your foot off the pedal really take all the challenging foods away from your diet to a degree i mean i'm not the one i'm not one to recommend very limited strict diets because i think that just makes life really miserable but some large food groups like wheat and dairy which you know we are talking about in another a post in terms of how they can really challenge the digestive system anyway just change to things that are maybe wheat and dairy free and that already will give your digestive system a bit of a breather and then we'll start analysing it in a little bit more detail in terms of testing, finding out what's wrong. If there is some pathogenic bacterial overgrowth then you would end up treating that probably with the targeted supplement programme as well as you know, looking at the diet. Or if it was a long term stress situation and I think it is very important to look at your, your life in a wider context as well and how you are now managing that stress and how that's still, you know, whether that's still at play, because we could, you know, we can give the digestive system key nutrients like glutamine, which is the key sort of fuel for the for the epithelial cells to grow and and be healthy. But if you're still very stressed out and actually the blood flow is constantly diverting away from your digestive organs, then you're just essentially paddling to stay afloat. Yeah, well, from what I'm hearing from what you're saying is that it's it's obviously specific. It's individual specific cases, yeah. so it's finding out what's happening, and it's also working on multiple levels yeah. to make sure that we're taking away the, the stress from the food, yeah. but also fixing it on a nutritional level, but also making sure on a psychological level that we've got in the, in the right, yeah. right place as well. Absolutely. Um, great, well look, thank you, Sana. And for those people that are watching, if they want more information, then I'm sure they know that we have a great information pack, and also a free 15 minute chat is a great way to kind of find out more about how this may be relevant to you. So thanks for watching. And we look forward to speaking with you again soon.